Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, a self-taught farmer electrical engineer and physicist who conducts open source research in the areas of unified physics, soil science, human and plant biology, neuroscience, and radiant energy power systems. No new ideas that come up in my videos can be patented. So there's already a lot of videos out there that explain Roden's mathematics at least a little bit and there's Roden's videos himself um, explaining vortex-based mathematics and uh, Roden's fingerprint of God, etc. So I'll link to a number of those down in the description. But as far as actually applying vortex-based mathematics to building toroids that we can actually um, 3D print and use or make by other means. Um, there hasn't been a lot of work done on that. So there are some outliers um, who maybe I don't know about, but the main work that we've seen done in the area is by Tom Barnett, uh, and I'll link to his video here. It's um, He goes through a lot of Roden's mathematics and applies it to making Toro designs, talks about some of the issues that come up. Um, but his work's reasonably difficult to understand if you don't have a little bit of background. So I'm hoping to kind of break that down in this video show how we apply this mathematics um, to making toroids just really simply we're going to do a more complicated um, animated video later that really gets in into the depths of it and shows you the full process but this will give you the overview because our next video is going to go into printing and winding these coils and releasing some of our open source designs um, so the other one that you can find who's done some work on this is Andrew Sprock, and he has just released a, um, and it was uh, some time ago now, like some years ago, but released a design using Tom Baronet's mathematics for this nested first and third order Roden coil uh, that you see here. So we're going to talk a little bit about the nested coils and really break down, yeah, the process in actually using the mathematics to build these things. And so as I've mentioned, all of Andrew Sprock and Tom Barnett's work is derived from Roden's work directly and some of his contemporaries. So if you want to find out more about that, um, check out some of the links below and you can find out why we're interested in these mathematics, applying them to coils. All right, so with all of that said, um, how do we actually design the coils? So looking into Tom's work and uh, the PDF that comes with Andrew's design, which you can find below as well. They've got a lot of the mathematics laid out there, which I won't go into too deeply, but essentially, first of all, we found it's easiest to determine the inner, um, the inner diameter uh, of the coil of the toroid. So it's best to do this just because when you've got a little bit of wire, it's not so much of a problem with these first order coils, which I'll talk about soon, but as you're getting into larger coils, you'll find that the hole in the center here reduces quite a lot and you still want to be able to spit a, fit a spool of wire in between. So it's just a practical consideration to start with our inner diameter so we know what we're going to get at our end result there. Um, so yeah, first we choose our inner diameter. So then we need to determine the outer diameter of our toroid, uh, which we do by multiplying the inner diameter by phi for a first order coil, which this is, to leave it simply. Um, so again, you can look into the mathematics to do that in the links, um, and we'll be releasing more on that, but inner diameter, multiply it by phi, we have the outer diameter. So this is where the different orders of Roden coils come in, which is the name that Tom Barnett gave them in his video, and that works well enough. Um, I'm not sure that Roden uses it, but, um, so this is a first order coil, and so you can see it's got quite a large inner diameter, uh, and then the toroid formers are not very large. The toroid isn't very thick there. Um, and so that is just the inner diameter times phi to get our outer diameter, hence the kind of thinner toroid here. Uh, but then we can also do a third order coil, or a fifth order coil, or a seventh order coil, um, going all the prime numbers up as well. And so this is a third order coil, um, and that is the inner diameter times phi to the power of three. 
Um, and so you can see in this nested design here, the inner coil, you probably can't see it very well, but there is a coil inside there. That's much like this one, um, a first order coil. And then the outer shell, uh, this larger coil outside it, is a third order coil. So uh, inner diameter times phi to the power of three to determine the outer diameter. Um, and of course, you can just keep going up. Um, so we can calculate, you know, fifth, seventh and, and continually going up. I'm still using the phi ratio to calculate the outer diameter by multiplying phi to the power of the prime numbers. Um, and starting with phi to the power of three for the third order coil and phi to the power of five for the fifth order coil, phi to the power of seven for the seventh order coil and so on going up. Um, so yeah, first order coil, third order coil. Um, and that's pretty much up to that point, just based on Andrew Sprock's uh, existing designs, really going through his work, relating it to the mathematics that him and Tom talk about to work out how to design these from scratch. And that's something my wife Emma's done, uh, who's got really quite deep into understanding these coils and the geometry behind them. So she's also designing a fifth order coil, which will be even bigger than this one. It's, uh, I think about, well, I think about like 800 uh, mil wide or something so far, or maybe a little wider. So it's going to be quite large and there's going to be many, many, many parts to it because just printing this one, um, you know, a 3D printer plate is only so big, at least our little end of V2, 3V2 is. Um, so we have to print all these very, very small parts, link them together. But Emma's come up with an absolutely incredible design um, that's very easy to put together. It doesn't require glue. Um, and follows all of this mathematics. So we'll have that one released soon. I think it's the first time anyone's released a fifth order coil, at least publicly, that we've seen. So um, some people may have fun with that. Uh, and we'll also have the first order, third order designs and some others up really soon as well with a printing and winding video to accompany it. So then next we need to calculate how the wire channels are going to be wrapped around the toroid um, according to vortex base mathematics. Um, so we can use this using Marco Roden's number maps um, and you can find out more about those directly in Roden's videos and also Tom Barnett again speaks about them quite a lot in his short demonstration on it. Um, so we need to choose again what Tom Barnett calls like a 9 by 9 or an 18 by 18 or a 36 by 18 um, coil um, and that's just determined on the amount of formers in the coil and the amount of holes that are in the former. Um, so if we're looking at for example um, a 36 by 18 we would have 36 holes in each former so 36 channels of wire and then we'd have 18 formers around the toroid. So um, this one a particular one I believe is an 18, so 18 holes around the formers and 9 around the toroid. Although it's actually slightly adjusted to 19 holes and I'll explain why that is in a moment. There's a good reason for it. So you can determine this using Roden's number maps and again just check out Tom Barnett's video if you're interested in seeing how that's done and we'll deal with it more later as well in future videos. This is really just an overview to show you the process of how these coils have come about and how you could do it yourself with the existing information already out there. All right, so if we really strictly use vortex-based math to determine the geometry of our coil and the winding pattern of it and everything, um, we'll actually end up with a coil like this one, which it, oops, sorry. Um, it doesn't really look any different because it isn't wound yet. But what you'll find is when you start to wind around it, you'll get around once. So, you know, one loop around the coil through the, um, the inner ring and then back to the same place and it will come back to exactly the same place. So in the end, this coil has to be wound with nine different channels of wire. So it'll have nine inputs, nine outputs to fill all of the holes in every former. Um, and that's using strictly vortex-based mathematics. That's the coil you end up with, um, which I didn't know for a very long time because of course no one's doing coil designs like that, probably because they're not particularly practical. 
Um, and so that's why we've used a method of offsetting the mathematics slightly to end up with a unifiler winding like this coil at the back here. So we've just got one wire that will go through every hole on every former uh, to complete the toroid. So we can do this by either adding an extra hole to each former or depending on the number map used, because uh, it doesn't work in all scenarios, but adding an extra former and then leaving the amount of holes on each former the same. Um, and it, look, this is just the method of offsetting that's been used by others in the past. And when we looked at the mathematics, we were like, yeah, I see why they did that. Um, because there's not really a very practical way to get that unifiler winding. I'm not really sure how it came about initially, but you know, that sounds like a little bit of a disappointment if you're really interested in how um, accurately vortex-based mathematics describes, um, you know, the nature of the dielectric and magnetic fields and, and relates to physics. But what you are getting is still a coil that is as close to the natural geometry um, of the, the magnetic field as I'm aware you can get. And, and that's really cool. And they do display some very, very unusual effects from having this unifiler winding pattern. Very interesting for radiant power research, very interesting for playing music through magnets and doing all sorts of things um, that I have showed and will show later on the channel. So those are mainly going to be the ones that we're exploring that have this slightly offset um, VBM geometry where we're adding an extra hole or an extra former to the coil to make it one unifiler winding pattern. So if you're interested in seeing those designs uh, that my wife Emma has come out with, and we're fairly sure they're accurate, but of course we're always just trying um, and trying to advance the work. So if you have any feedback, hit us up with it. Um, and if you want to see those designs, just subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, um, and we'll have them up online really soon with another video on how to print and wind these coils. Once again, thanks for watching.